How's it going, Christian Post? It's Jeannie here. And today I am joined by former professional athlete, now successful actor whose breakout role in War Room had everyone making prayer closets in their house. I don't know about you, but I have one in mine. <laughs> CC Stallings, he has a new movie coming out, a documentary about his own life, 24 Counter, the story behind the run. And I can't wait to learn about this man of God his testimony, his transformation, and all that God is doing. TC, thank you for chatting with CP. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so let's talk about the documentary. Um, so we talked a little bit before we jumped on. So it was adapted from your book. Talk to us yeah. about that. Yeah, well, me and my wife joke about this because we, we call it a documony. And uh, <laughs> I think I think we might have invented that word. I, I love know, it. But I don't even know if that word exists. But it's a docu a documentary about my testimony, uh, about how I came to know the Lord, you know, and it just, it happened at a time where I was in college playing pro, uh, playing college football, you know, around my sophomore year. So the story was so, you know, inspiring that I wanted to make sure that people knew it, you know, especially athletes. So it started off as a book that I wrote called Playing on God's Team, where I was targeting athletes who I know are in the locker rooms, just like I was having to deal with you know, having a strong faith while still being in college, while still being an athlete and all the temptations that come along with that. So it started off as just that. But then when I realized that a team, by definition, is just a collection of people coming together for a common goal. Mm -hmm. And I started to think like, well, Christians are a collection of Christ followers coming together for the common goal of yeah. telling people about Jesus. So I realized like, man, this book is for everybody. So I kind of started sharing the book with everybody. And then because I lead off in the book with telling my story, I decided to go ahead and open up that testimony with pictures and video. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just make this into a documentary of my testimony mm -hmm. so that people can see it. So, you know, the, 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 the movie is like, you know, sitting there having a cup of coffee with me and you ask me, TC, tell me about yourself. How did you come to know the Lord? And I get to tell you, and meanwhile, all these pictures and videos are popping up over top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. See the pictures. I love that. I'm sure that's definitely going to be more moving, you know, when you actually put the visual to the words. Tell me about, you know, I know the movie explores growing up, um, you know, in a low income neighborhood or so that's what the press release says in a dangerous neighborhood. Yeah. You know, I think it's such an important time for people to hear from a man of God like yourself, you know, who's been doing these incredible things despite the world and the, the world, despite the, the life that, you know, surrounded you as a child, feel free to talk. You know, I know there are people out there that feel hopeless because they feel like everything is, the odds are stacked against them. But, you know, yeah. you're a testimony. You are living proof. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, that's a great question. And as I look at what's going on right now, and I look at, you know, as, as a 42-year-old man, everything that I've learned, you know, over the years that the Lord has taught me, and then I go back to Cleveland now. I'm, I'm a young kid, and I live in a world that we live in right now. And everything that we're experiencing right now is going on right now. What would I be able to tell myself is that none of this is surprising God. You know, none of this is outside of, you know, his strengths. None of this is something where I can't pray to him and ask him what to do in the midst of it. And so if I was a young kid right now, uh, you know what, if I was anybody right now, my thing would be, Lord, I know you have a plan. This ain't surprising you. What is my role within these times that we're living in? Yeah. And then I will be able to obey and let the Holy Spirit lead me. And if there are painful moments, well, if the Lord is leading, then I know I can call that ordained pain. You know, this mm. is what he planned for me to go through. And then that means he's going to strengthen me to be able to get out of it. You know, so for me, you know, growing up, I didn't even know exactly all the things that I know now. But then that's the other great thing about God's mercy, his grace, is because here I am as a kid living in a tough neighborhood, living in poverty, living around gangs, didn't have my dad, all the ingredients to where you don't succeed in life. Mm -hmm. But God had a plan at that time. And I'm thinking football got planted in my heart as just a means out of the neighborhood where he's like, nah. In about, you know, 10, 10, 12 years, you're going to come head on with me. I'm going to use football mm. to get you to come see me, mm. and I'm going to change your life. So he, he, he has a plan regardless of what's going on in our world. Wow. I've never heard ordained pain. That is so powerful. You, yeah, know? you know what? 
I'll tell you exactly where that came from. Um, one of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 139.16. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. And so I, this became one of my favorite scriptures because I'm like, wait a minute. That means that God, before I was born, laid out what he wanted me to do. So I'm like, how do I explain, you know, uh, the bad times? And, you know, did God actually plan out some rough spots in my life? Absolutely. You can look at Job. You can look at all these people where God's like, you know what, Satan, I'm going to let you touch him. But, mm -hmm. but that's because I got a plan that's going to bring me glory. That's mm -hmm. ordained pain. So when I have mistakes in my life that I make on my own due to my sin, that's TC pain. That's what mm -hmm. I create. Like, I don't want that. If I'm going to have some troubles and struggles, then I want the ones that are promised to me in scripture. In this life, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. That's ordained pain. Anyone who wants to live a godly life will be, will be persecuted. That's ordained pain. These are promises that we skip over sometimes, but if we lean into that and grow from it, then uh, God will get the glory. And so I'm, I'm all about that ordained pain. And I don't sign up to be hurt. I ain't no tough guy. <laughs> but if God puts me on that path, I'm all for it because I know he's got a reason for it. Amen, Pastor. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, you better preach. I'm loving it. Um, you know, it's funny that you said this because I had designed one of my questions around this because I totally see how God set you up, you know, using football as that tool. Right. Talk about your outlet, your outlet first becoming football, but then God getting your attention. Tell us about that because you talked about it and, and I know you talk about it in your book and in the movie, but you talk about, you know, being a young man, living your dream, all these temptations, all these things, the lures of life, you know, trying to dangle, you know, the carrot in front of you so you can go the opposite way, but God intervened. And that moment obviously is God, but then it also comes from you, right? Because you have to surrender. Tell us about yeah. that. It's definitely a two-way street. I, I, I just learned that Jesus needed to be Lord of my life and not just the Savior of it. And a lot of people don't understand that there's a difference there. Jesus is the Savior, whether you accept that fact or not. You know, it, it, and I always give the example of like, you know, it, it, if I push you out of the way of a speeding car and you and I save your life, you knock your head on the ground and get a concussion and you forget the whole thing. It, it doesn't negate the fact that I saved you, whether you said that or not. Like, people are telling you, like, hey, the dude from War Room, T.C. Stallings, pushed you out of the way of the bus, man. It was incredible. And you're like, man, get out of here, man. Ain't no T.C. Stallings pushed me. <laughs> Just because you you don't choose to believe it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. I am the Savior. So Jesus doesn't need our help for us to be the Savior. He's the Savior regardless. He did that long before we were born. But for him to be the Lord, that's a two-way thing. He says, he said, I'm Lord. And you said, well, I accept that. Mm -hmm. We have to accept him as Lord. So Jesus as Lord and Savior both for me i had jesus as my savior but i have football as my lord wow. because i would do anything football told me to do i would go anywhere football told me to go i will always train i will put the things of god aside for football you know and academics anything football was king because football could get me into college football could get me into pros football could get me out the neighborhood so i'm accrediting all my gifts and all everything i wanted to that sport and jesus knew you know, God knew, Holy Spirit knew, he doesn't realize who, who the Lord is. So you know what? I'm going to use football. He'll have some successes. But when I watch him for 15 years, give everything he's got to this sport. So he knows how to make something lower than an idol. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to say, listen, I've seen you do that for the sport. Now this is what it truly means to be a Christian. You have to do that for me. And I know you know how to do it because I've seen you do it for football. So now give me that drive, that passion, that desire and let me lead your life. So now it ain't, Lord, help me be the best football player I can be. Lord, help me be the best Christian I can be. And if that involves football, great. If not, I just want to go wherever you're taking me. And so he used football to teach me that lesson because I ran into somebody who knew exactly what that meant when I was in college. And they shared some things with me and it completely changed my life. And that's what the documentary centers around, that moment. That is so powerful. You know, there's so many people, I think right now during the pandemic and lockdown and all that, who are kind of realizing well, if they're not, they should be the things that they have made Lord, because, you know, life is now hard to live without all these things that we're constantly distracted by. So, yeah. wow, that, that'll preach. Thank you so much for that. Well, Seriously. you know, tragedy, tragedies and challenges certainly bring out who the real 
Christ followers are. You saw that a lot happening in scripture and, and you know, sometimes we make that mistake and we definitely got to repent of them. But for sure, when the money get low and you get in an opportunity where you can compromise your faith to get ahead, where you can stay faithful and you might still have tough times ahead, people will make that choice to compromise. And see, that's why I wrote this book and, and made this documentary is because the compromise, Satan loves that. Satan's like, yeah, yeah, he, he will help you compromise. You know, and then you fall victim to that scripture, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father. And then he says, if you deny me before a man, I'll deny you before the Father. But if you honor me before a man, I'll honor you before the Father. And so Satan wants us to compromise. And I'm, I'm just trying to hopefully encourage everybody that it ain't worth it. Because in the end, you're going to be face to face with Jesus, either by death or by him coming back. Yeah. You'll be face to face with him one day. And you want that to be a favorable encounter. Yeah. You know, I was going to ask you, who, who are you hoping sees this documentary? I know you talked about people in sports, but, you know, your life story, whether we can relate, because I'm not a football player, <laughs> but I could relate, you know, to having idols that I had before making Jesus my Lord and him getting my attention. Who do you yeah. want to reach? Everybody. And, and you know, what's funny that you say that when I, again, God's plan is so great. When I initially wrote this, I wrote this with the athlete in mind because that's where I was in that space. But again, when you define team, it's a collection of people coming together. And I was like, teams are jobs. Like everybody on their job will come in and whatever that boss says, they're going to do collectively to make this company successful or that company successful. Mm -hmm. Churches are teams. Families are teams. Everybody coming together to make the family work. So when I realized that, okay, look at all the effort you give to these individual groups of people. You want to succeed. So you're going to do everything the boss say. You're going to look at the manual for the, for the company and do everything that manual says. You, you're, not, you're going to come to work whether you feel like it or not because you desire the result. So when I look at all these different things, I'm like, man, teams are everywhere. So everybody can relate to what it means to give all of your effort to the team, listen to the leader. In my case, as a football player, listen to the coach, know the game plan. And so I'm just like, man, God's team is the same way. God is the coach. The game is life. The Bible is the playbook. We play every single day. That's our schedule. Our opponent is Satan. And so everybody can relate to that. So now I want current Christians walking that road and, and to, to read it and, and watch, read the book and watch the movie so that they can understand that Satan's going to try to get you to compromise. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. And for those who want to see what it truly means to be a Christian, I want them to be able to see it so that when you're looking around the world and people are like, hey, I'm a Christian, then you can look at their life and be like, you know what? That don't match up with what y'all coach be saying y'all need to do. Yeah. So that ain't what it truly means to be on God's team. You know, so I want everybody to be able to see it. And again, it's me sharing my testimony with the world. You know, so that's, gonna, that's what I want to do. I'm going to ask one more question about this. Um, you know, the times that we're in are pretty, pretty crazy overall, you know, all over. There's a pandemic, there's social unrest, there's racism, there's injustice. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence that your movie is coming out at this time. Talk a little bit about that and just the fact that God have it that your movie would come out this month in the middle of all this. Well, you know, it's this is another thing that I'm inspired about because when I really did work on this, it was during right when COVID-19 began. You know, I'm an actor. Um, everything that I normally do got shut down. You know, you're not able to do anything within the industry. Um, I'm also, you know, I, I public speak. Well, you can't speak in Literally everything I do got shut down. And so I'm sitting in my home and then we got quarantine. Nobody can leave and go anywhere. So you're just sitting here and you just, I, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. And then on April 15th, my mother died from COVID-19. You know, oh my so, gosh. You know, yeah, so I'm sitting up there and then four weeks later, my grandmother died, you know, her mother. So oh all of this is happening and I pray about like, Lord, I, this is, this is, this is, this is really painful, but I got a bunch of siblings. Some of them don't know the Lord. Some do like, I have a responsibility to, for them. And the Holy Spirit li literally held me up so that I can stay strong and do what I need. It ain't, it ain't TC strength, straight up the Holy Spirit. And it was during this moment that I, I leaned into this project and got it done. So I, I wanted people to ask me like, when did this happen? Well, this happened at a time where I could have balled up and cried and just, you know, and, and that would have been fine if the Holy Spirit didn't have a bigger vision for me at the moment. So during this pandemic, I reached out to my family and did the best I could for them, got through two funerals, 
and knocked out a documentary that will tell people how good God is in my life. And I did it at that time. Not when everything was great. I did it when everything was hurting, you know? So if that, if that doesn't tell anybody, um, you know, if you're not inspired by that alone, just understand this. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing, you know, in terms of how to handle it. You know, you can literally say to yourself, Lord, even in this, what purpose do you have for me? What do you want me to do? So that's how I handled the racism. That's how I handled COVID-19. That's how I handled it's just anything that we're dealing with is I'm like, Lord, what's your purpose in this? And then he showed me what it is. And the only other thing I would add to that is, you know, a lot of people have to understand, that's why we got to continue to read scripture, that you need to look at scripture and see that this shouldn't be shocking us that this is happening. So while everybody's running around trying to find solutions to stop it and end it, it's one of those things where it's like, I need to play my role within it. Because the Bible promises at times we get like this, we have to operate within it pull those out of it that want to come to Jesus and be pulled out of it. But the rest is going to happen. There's actually signs that Jesus is on his way. You know, so I'm just using scripture to navigate through all of this and I'll continue to do it. And birthed out of that came this documentary and uh, anything else the Lord wants me to do. Wow. I am so inspired by you. We were talking this whole time. I had no idea that this was kicked off in one of the hardest moments for you. I, I, I'm just, I'm literally inspired by the, the God in you. I see his supernatural strength and just your passion for him is so inspiring. And the fact that something like this was birthed, I, you know, I was talking about COVID-19 and, and, and other things, but you know, the loss of, of, of your mom. Yep, this um, is her right here. Yeah, this, the loss uh, of that. That's her right there. I don't know if you can Wait, talk a, talk talk a little more, cause so we can see. Oh, okay, yeah, my um, my my family. See, it was during the the funerals. You know, we couldn't even get into Ohio to be at a funeral, so I had to I had to watch it on on TV, um, to watch the funeral, both of them, and um, they sent me this picture of my mom on it, and so all, all of my siblings have them, and like I said, this happened April fifteenth, and then um. You know, then my grandmother died just four weeks later. And it was almost, it was just like, you can sit there and just let this stuff beat you up. Or you can be like, Lord, how can you get glory out of this? And we always talk about the peace that surpasses understanding. Well, you can't display that if you never get put in situations you don't understand. You know, and like I said, we, a lot of us talk about being a Christian. and this, But this is the part of it that people don't focus on enough is when people see you fight through pain, when people see you make it through stuff that they're dealing with too, but they don't quite have the strength to do it, you're like, hey, neither do I. This is what it looks like when you let the Holy Spirit lead and give you the strength to get through it. I can talk about that piece that surpasses understanding because, again, everything that I'm doing came out of it. And uh, I've been waiting to just fall apart and just break down and cry and just all that. I keep thinking it's going to happen. I dream about my mother almost every day. But what keeps happening is it's like, you know, the longer I hold you up, you can be there for your family. You can be there for anybody who wants to hear about this. And you can show them the peace that surpasses understanding yeah. instead of just constantly sharing scriptures about it. Let me let you live it out, which is the essence of the documentary. Um, everything I talk about in my life, now you get to see through documentation, through real video. Hey, man, he, he ran through this. That's why he's so passionate about it. Mm -hmm. That's why he can talk about it because he lived it. So now we just got to decide if we want what he has. I can tell you this, somebody lose their mom, their grandmother, their livelihood, their like all of their opportunity, everything shuts down and they still say, yeah, well, I trust in him. All right. I think I want a piece of a God like that mm -hmm. versus me falling off and just letting Satan have his way with me. So I hope mm -hmm. that's what people get out of it. Thank you so much for sharing that. You truly are living proof of the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I know people will be immensely blessed by this documentary. 